We've got Barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Uh, doing all right. Doing all right. A little, a little sad here. It's our last Know Your Enemy episode of the season. It is. And it sucks because it's, it's, little... it's a meaningless bowl game. Kyle, I hate bowl games. I'm going to say it. I hate bowl games. I... Look at the positive side, Jared. Look at the positive side. Make me. When's it, when's the last time Ohio State wasn't like the top in the top twelve in the past like ten years? I don't. Okay, so you're saying where it's going to be playoff games from here on out? Yes. Okay. Well, guess what? That's not <laughs> right now. That's I, not I right that's now. Right, right now, it's, it's a now. meaningless goddamn bowl game. <sighs> Welcome to Know Your Enemy. Where we're Angel. going, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not. You. Listen, I, I'm gonna do my best to get through this. I'm gonna do my best to get through this episode. This is. But if I don't bring my normal I'm, energy, I'm, if I don't, I may, I may be, I may be a minority. I may be a minority with, with some of the maybe hardcore Ohio State fans here. But I'm actually, I'm, I am excited to watch this Ohio State team head on over to do, to Texas in the Cotton Bowl. Increase their increase their uh, their record at going three and zero in the Cotton Bowl. Seeing some some of our young players get some get some meaningful snaps against a a pretty good um, Missouri team here. And are we going to see the next Marvin Harrison Jr.? Will we see the next uh, JSN or or whoever were her? We get to actually see them hit the field and perform well and be like, hey, really looking forward to seeing them in 2024 here. Really get some uh, get some hype going for next year. Nothing you just said doesn't also apply to the spring game. This is okay. this is this is like spring game plus. Welcome to know your enemy. But the, but the, but the difference is that spring game is like. I don't even consider a spring game a game. It's just a, it's, I don't consider it's a, an entertainment. And no, no, bowl this, games this were bowl literally game. invented. Jared, Jared, Jared. This bowl game, it's, it is a full on go at it at full speed as you can here. Cause, cause you got, you got, you got players here who are, who are going to, who are take this very seriously and want to win this game. The, the, the spring game is, it's just a, it's just an exhibition. No one, no one cares. Kyle, bowl games literally started as exhibition games. The, the birth of bowl games were exhibition games. The coaches poll didn't even do a re-ranking after the bowl games until the 70s, or maybe it was the late 60s. I forget. Bowl games existed for decades and decades and decades and decades and the coaches poll didn't even bother to re-rank afterwards all right well all right, i guess we're, we're not going to agree so we're just going to move on to know your enemy missouri tigers people missouri complain about two. money in college football oh it's money two. money money missouri money money's tennis. ruining college football the bowl games exist because of money they were invented as a spectacle to try to convince people to show up to the goddamn parade. Hey guys, come for, well, okay. Show up for the parade. Um, and I guess there'll be a football game too. Missouri coming in 10 and two in this, in this ball game here. Uh, a, lot, a lot of talent on that offensive side here. Brady cook, very, um, has had a really good season over 3000 yards passing. Uh, Cody Schrader, one of the one of the most productive running backs in the country this year, over fifteen hundred rushing yards, thirteen touchdowns, and uh, Luther Burden, out and wide receiver, uh, eighty three catches, almost twelve hundred yards, eight touchdowns, very productive season for him too. So this is a Missouri offense, probably the best offense Ohio State has faced all year. Uh, very yeah. very talented. Very talented here, but 
But looking on the defensive side, I, I think Ohio State, with even with the talent that with um, with the talent that Ohio State lost in the in the transfer portal, I still think Ohio State can can move the ball pretty well against uh, this Missouri defense. Yeah, I mean it's it's an incredibly talent. This is a really fun offense. The Missouri offense is a very fun offense. Um, very talented, uh, deep uh wide receiving core easily the best wide receiving I, I think this is the second best wide receiving core in college football i think you see we'll see the two best wide receiving cores in college football in this game um the, the, the big di- the big difference is that missouri's keeping their starting quarterback in this one Ohio state's coming in with uh their their backup quarterback um devin brown to uh to throw to throw the ball around here do, do we know f- for sure, for yeah, absolute certain that Brady Cook's going to play. Is he draft eligible? Could could he could he decide not to play? I don't well, know. Let me look. I, I would I would assume so, but let me let me double check. I'm because you know it's a bowl game and it doesn't matter, so he, he might just decide not to play in it. Is my point. I don't know if it's good podcasting to be telling people that the game we're previewing doesn't matter, but I, I'm just, I'm trying to be honest with people. That's how I feel. Technically he could, he's a, he's a, he's a junior this year, Jared. So technically he could, by the way, my, the, this, the chat scroll was not chat scrolling. So people were talking and we weren't seeing it. Uh, a win in the cotton bowl unfucks the dialogue around the team. I don't agree. Is well, this you know the what? second episode? This is the second episode. The I mean, chat I, isn't I, on I, the I, screen. Do they have they? I, uh, yeah, the they do have Mookie Cooper. They absolutely do. Is this where I'm supposed to chat? Yes, I, it wasn't scrolling. I don't know why, but it's it's fine. We're we're good now. You know, um, Duncan, I I agree with you. I I, I think this th- this will I think help set the tone going into into next season here. You. You win, you win, you win a, a New Year Six bowl game here. You get you get to you get to see some of this younger talent play some meaningful snaps here. So that part I am excited with, about. And, and you come out with in the, the same way. Here. I'm excited yeah, about spring so. games. I think so. Suncard, is that is that your license plate? <laughs> Just posting your license plate in the it's OSU 69 on a Delaware plate. You can get an Ohio State logo on a Delaware plate. I don't even think I can get one here in North Carolina, Jared. I don't think I could get one for a university that's not in Ohio in Ohio. If you're in the alumni association, you can. So you you can't just ask for it. I mean, they're also using the logo from like. It's like the The 90s. Is that early 90s? Yeah. Called a vanity plate. Well, yeah, the vanity plate. I think that's a that's a common term. um, Defensively here, Jared. Mentioned that I think Jose can move the ball uh, pretty well on this defense, but they still have some really good talent here. Uh, they got a pair of safeties, uh, Charleston and, and uh, Charlie's. Uh, I think th- they really like to play physical. They lead the team in, in tackles 59 for, for Joseph Charleston, uh, 53 for Jalen Charlie's really like to make plays. So keep, keep an eye on the safeties to see if they really play up here or if they're going to try to respect the deep ball with the host state with the talent at host state's wide receivers here um also here uh defensive back uh chris abrams drain uh, four interceptions for the year um i i very very talented defensive back there and as as well as the linebacker of uh, hopper uh, le- leading the is the heart and soul of the uh, linebackers there 
um, 55 tackles and has uh, three sacks for the year so far. Yeah. Um, again, that we know of. Uh, Missouri is not going to be missing any impact players during the Cotton Bowl. Um, mm -hmm. They have lost their fair share of players to the transfer portal like anyone else has. Um, again, I, you know, and I'm not going to say I know all of the uh, snap counts for all of the players at Missouri, but none of the players they lost um, are what I would call impact players, much like Ohio State. Um, Ohio State's lost even more players, uh, 17, I believe, at this time to the transfer portal. Um, they will um, not be playing, obviously. Um, most notably, of course, is Kyle McCord. Um, but even then, Julian, Julian Fleming would have played. Julian Fleming is yep. not playing. Chip Trainum probably would have played. He's obviously not going to be playing. Um, that's probably about it. However, um, as far as guys who would have gotten significant snaps. Maybe uh, Drew Warrior may, may have got some snaps, perhaps. I, I would not significant snaps. Um, but yeah, that we know of. And by, uh, well, Mayan Williams was hurt anyway, so we weren't going to see Mayan Williams regardless. Mayan Williams, of course, has declared for the NFL. Wait, do we have a real answer from Marvin? No. Um, no one on the Ohio State roster at this Nobody. time has opted out of the bowl game. Again, Mayan Williams has declared for the draft, but Mayan Williams was not going to be healthy for this game regardless. So whether he's injured or opted out, it, it doesn't matter. He's not, he wouldn't have played. Um, no one, no one on the Ohio State roster has said that they aren't playing in this bowl game. Um, Donovan Jackson, Emeka Buka, um, a few other guys have stated they will be playing in this game. Um, so that's, you know, obviously noteworthy. Um, thank you. Special guest, Jim Tressel. I, I'm just telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. Uh, no one has said that they aren't going to be playing in this game. That's, and like I said, there have been a few players who said that they are. Um, Ryan Day, during the signing day press conference, uh, said, uh, quote, well, I don't know if this is a quote, but it's it's from Tony Gerdeman. Um, He's not going to make announcements for players that are opting out. If you read between the lines and how that's worded, that would suggest that there are players who are opting out and that they just aren't publicly known at this time. He'll allow those players to do that. Uh, he then does say that Marvin Harrison and JT have been at practice. Mm -hmm. I don't. You, you can read into that however you want. Quite frankly, in my opinion, doesn't mean practicing. That's a good point. <laughs> it is. At practice does not necessarily mean practicing. That That is a valid point. Marv could be oh, there Alex. preparing Burke. I mean, Chris Olave attend went, like traveled to the Rose Bowl with with the team, knowing he wasn't going to play. It wasn't like a last second choice. He knew he wasn't going to play, and he just was like coaching up the guys. Um, we had hope. O honestly, if you're again, this game doesn't matter. This game doesn't matter. It's totally meaningless and it doesn't matter. If you know, if you know you are going to the draft, let Carnell Tate get some reps. 
I want Marv to have the TD record. Well, I, I I think that, don't I care. think that's the player to me, Jared. I think that's the player that I think we may see as having that um that next special moment or the person who's going to wow us is is state especially uh, especially if marv does not play in this game which i'm fully expecting him to not play i'm go, i'm going to, i'm going into the mindset that we will not see marv in this game i i i mean i i kind of agree with you i don't necessarily know where that confidence is coming from. Um, but I, I, I tend to agree. Um, it matters for the program in the long run. I disagree. I, I, I don't think that the outcome of this game will affect the direction of the program. This will not spawn a new reality. The outcome of this football game will, will not create a, a new branch on the timeline. It's like Utah in 2021. Again, it was fun. I had fun. It was a fun game to watch. I think if we don't win that game against Utah, it doesn't matter. Sorry. Like, I don't think it matters. Fun game to watch. Sure. Absolutely. 100%. Watch it and have fun. But I do like beating the SEC. Sure. Is Missouri in the SEC? Last I checked. Um, all right. um, anything about you anything, forgot a word there. Any, no, it's any, just anything? more SEC cannon fodder. Fun game to watch together. Uh, sure. Anything, anything that this. Um, any, anything on the stats stat wise, Jared, that really stands out for you? On the, in this Missouri team? Uh, for the first time in a while, I do note that they have a better uh, yards per play average than Ohio State, which you don't see Ohio State losing that category too often. They get 6.5 yards per play. Um, they also slightly edge out Ohio State in points per play. Um, dare I say it, Kyle? Missouri has a better offense than Ohio State. I know. We haven't said that. We, we don't say that too often. I, I think Ohio State doesn't have the better offense in this game. And, it, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, Missouri does have an incredible offensive tackle in uh, Javen Foster. Um, they have a, a you know, a competent quarterback who's actually started before, which Ohio state won't have in this game. Not to say that Brown isn't competent, but just that he hasn't started before. Um, and Missouri Kyle red zone scoring percentage on the year. Mm -hmm. 100%, 100% of the time when Missouri has entered the red zone, they have left with points. You don't see which that is left it. To to say that in December is impressive. Very it's incredibly impressive. impressive. Uh, that being said, uh, Ohio State has a significantly better defense. Um, yeah. Yes, yes. You look at like opponent yards per play. Ohio State only gives up four. Missouri gives up 5.3. And that's like per play. That adds up. Uh, opponent yeah. points per play. Ohio State only gives up 0.17. Missouri gives up 0.34. Um, so doubling. I would have doubled if if it's not if you went to the next decimal. Oh, sh stop it, Jared! It's, <laughs> stop it. Um, opponent uh, completion percentage. Ohio State holds opponents to just over fifty percent completion percentage. Um, crazy good. Crazy good. It is crazy good until you realize that the quarterbacks in the Big Ten kind of sucked this year, if we're being honest. That's true. That's um, true. Opponent completion percentage against Missouri, 63%. Um, a lot of the offensive numbers are incredibly similar. They both, Ohio, again, like I'm not going to keep reading numbers. That gets boring. But if I go through all of the offensive numbers, Ohio State and Missouri are very comparable across the board. 
the defensive numbers, Ohio State absolutely just douses Missouri. Demolishes, yeah. I don't know why I went with douses. I don't think that's a common word someone would use in that situation. But yeah, okay. So the Missouri offense, points per play, yards per play, uh, points per game, yards per game, third down conversion percentage, fourth down conversion percentage, red zone scoring percentage. The absolute worst ranking in there is 33, 33rd in the country. The absolute worst ranking is 33rd in the country in all of those categories. Most of those cat, all but two of those categories, which are yards per game and third down conversion percentage, they're in the top 20 in the country. They have an incredibly efficient, um, fun offense. Um, their defense is just kind of mid. Uh, uh, points per game, 42nd in the country. Yards per game, 44th. Points per play, 47th. Yards per yeah, play, kind of, yeah, 56. Kind of yeah, kind of just kind of mid. Third down conversion percentage, they're actually kind of bad. No, they're 80th in the country. Um, not sure if Missouri is going to be able to score in this game. Yeah, they will. They will. Yes, they'll score. Um, again, it also it, they'd score even if Ohio State brought their full defense, which I don't believe Ohio State is going to bring their full defense. Yep. Uh, there, there's going to be players opting out. Uh, that we don't know of, I am pretty willing to bet. Um, so even if Ohio State brought their full complement defense, don't worry, by not score, I mean score less than seventeen or so. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to our um, our prediction here. Um, actually, we, we can we can jump right into that then, Jared, of our of our um, predictions here. Okay. Um, All right. So, so Ohio State player to watch in this game here, with with a lot with a lot of the players <laughs> out. You, you who's get, playing? Of... How do I how do I do this? I don't even know who's playing. Yeah. Well, let, let's just let's just start with knowing who you know will be playing, Jared. I don't I don't I know who I don't know who will be playing. That's the but problem. You know. You know Yes, you do. You 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 know. No, I you don't. Know everybody, you you don't know everybody, Jared. But you you know a good amount of people who are who are going to be playing in this game. Devin Brown, there player to watch. Devin Brown. Well, there let's see what Devin Brown good can job. do with another year of practice under his belt. Let's see if he's ready to take over this team. We've never seen Devin Brown just be given the reins before. Um, what happens when he goes into the game? And of course, then again, maybe Lincoln Klein is kind, kind, Keenholz. I always mispronounce his name. Uh, Lincoln Keenholz. Um, Mike, he, he might split snaps with Keenholz. We don't know. Oh, stop. I, I, You're going to say got, the OSU O line versus the Missouri D line. <laughs> I, got, I got, I got, tape I'm not as the, as, as the player to watch with, um, yeah. With so many wide receivers out, um, Emeka maybe maybe not playing. Um, no, Emeka's playing. Emeka said he's going to play. That's that's right. Yes, Emeka's going to be playing. But you got Marvin Harrison most likely out. I'm I'm going to count him as out. Um, I, I think I think I think Tate will sh put on a good a good show here on why he's like the next. Buckeye great here at wide receiver. Uh, hey, the, right. does this chat want to do an Ohio State player to watch? Does, does the chat want to do a uh, Ohio State player to watch? Uh, Gangland says Tate. You're just, you're just, uh, you're just copying Kyle. You're just copying Kyle. That's all you're doing. How dare you? <laughs> Kyle is smart. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, enemy, enemy to player to watch, Jared. Enemy player to watch. Um, it's Luther Burden, man. Luther Burden's special. Um, Ohio State really wanted Luther Burden, dude. Special. 
you know, I'm, I'm actually going to go with the other, um, the other big target here, uh, Schrader. I think one thing that Ohio State running back has, has, has gotten better uh, this year, but I, I think that with a very, very good running back and with just just the unknown of with the, with the defensive side here and who, who's going to be playing and all that, Schrader may may get some big yard may get bit some get some big yards here. So I think I think Schrader is is the player to watch for for Missouri here. All righty. Uh, key matchup. Who do you have in chat? Does chat want to do an enemy player to watch? And you're not allowed to say Schrader. Um, Kyle, key matchup. Who, who do you have? Well, uh, what was it? Uh, let's see. Ohio State offensive line versus Missouri State. No, wait. Oh. <laughs> uh, Gangland says Schrader was my idea the whole time, but since he can't, he'll go with Mookie Cooper. I, I key matchup here. Yeah, it, it, it's tough just because of so many, so many new faces coming in playing here. It re- really is just about being consistent. It's, it's, I, I think that, I think the key, the key matchup here, I, I think it's going to be third down conversions for Ohio state. It's not, it's not a matchup. Well, I, I know it's not a matchup, but it's if if, if it's really the matchup, it's it it really it, it's it's what um, Duncan said. It's it's Ohio State's offensive line here versus Missouri's de- defensive line. Like, can 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 Ohio State give Devin Brown enough time here to um? He's gonna say no to do, because to do anything, he was saying. Anything. Don't put that cop out on me. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Missouri's wide receivers versus Ohio State's secondary. I just, yeah, it's, I, 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 under- I feel like it's the most, most strength on strength you can get in this game. Um, yeah, no, I, I, and, I, and I say that not knowing who the hell is going to play in Ohio State's secondary. Yeah. Well, fair enough. All right, the spread here. The spread here is Missouri at two and a half. Yeah, I thought it was one and a half. Last I checked, it was one and I, a I half. Get, the line's been fluctuating 20. a lot. And I'm going to say this real quick. If you guys are betting on bowl games that don't matter, you have a problem. How can you bet on a game if you don't even know who's going to decide the game's important enough to play in or not for the excitement here, here's the thing about gambling in order for it to be exciting, you have to care about losing the money. And in order to care about losing the money, it has to be enough money for it to hurt a little bit. I got, I got MGM here. It says Missouri at minus three, so two and a half. Missouri at two and a half. All right, I'm going with Ohio State. Uh, I've, I will. Ohio State opened, I believe, at seven and a half. Maybe it was six and a half in this game. Um, but then Kyle McCord left, and the number dipped. Don't real life gamble. I agree. I agree. Uh, Duncan, the. Again, how how are you going to bet on a game that you don't even know who's going to play in? You have a yeah. problem. Stop. Stop it. Can you imagine taking a prop bet on Cade Stover and then you find out 10 minutes before kickoff that he's opting out? Oh, hey, I'm taking Missouri. I'm definitely going to take Missouri here. And then wait a minute. What's that? Brady Cook has decided he's going to the NFL and he's opting out of this game. Oh no. <laughs> Who gambles on these games? Like if you want to gamble on the playoff games, fine. Both teams are motivated. Both teams give a shit. Who's betting real life money on a fucking meaningless bowl game where neither team cares. 
Because I'm sorry, that's where we're at with bowl games now. Neither team cares. This is spring who game got, plus. Who do, got, who do you got to win, Jared? People post and lines for high point? school football on Twitter, Jared. Those, those people have problems. Who do you got to Winter, win? What's your final score? I mean, if I picked Ohio State to cover, uh, no, that's not true. Uh, but yeah, I'm picking Ohio State to win. Uh, I'm going with a final score of 21 35 Ohio State. 21 35? Yeah. I wasn't trying to make it nice. So 35 21. 35 21. Um, yeah, I had I had something very, very similar. Um, I had Ohio State 31 and Missouri 17. That's fair. That's you you as, just took as, away as you just took away you, you took a touchdown away from each team and gave them a field goal instead. I as good of an offense as Missouri is, like I I trust in um and knows sure. and how and how he runs his defense here and he's 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 really shown up this year. Like it really he's done he's done a really good job overall this season and I and I think he can he can do that one more time here. So oh. and I think and I think he can really slow down slow down this Missouri offense here. For all of Ohio State's like Misses and near misses this off season so far. And yes, we're in the off season because this game doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm being a dick at this point. Duke deciding not to hire Knowles has been. It's, it's Ohio State's biggest victory of the off season so far. Uh, they got uh, Manny Diaz, right? That's who Duke ended up hiring. Am I correct? Um, the uh, but yeah, that's it's Ohio State's biggest win of the offseason so far was Duke hiring Manny Diaz instead of instead of Coach Knowles. Easily the biggest win of the offseason so far. Now, who's going to be Ohio right. State's running back? You think Henderson's going to carry the ball a bunch this game? I say Ohio State has. Kyle, Ohio State has two scholarship running backs going into this game. I, I, I think, I think from what we've seen in the portal, I kind of, kind of believe that we're going to see Henderson in this game. Oh no, I, Hender, I, I fully believe Henderson's coming back. Like if I, that's, that's not the question I'm asking. Okay. I'm just. You know, he's played a lot this season. How many carries do you really want to give him? But you only have one other scholarship running back. It was, it's going to be Hayden season. I'm just saying, I think Hayden gets the majority of the, I'm just, I'm just tossing in a, a prop prediction. I think Hayden gets most of the carries this game. Okay. You think he's coming back, Jared? I can't see that. Uh, I had been, no, I, I'm, fairly convinced that he's coming back as a matter of fact um i don't think chip trainum goes into the portal otherwise like why why else would chip trainum go into the portal that's i chip didn't go into the portal right away he went into the portal a few days later i think that was trey saying yeah i'm coming back and chip saying Okay, well, I don't want to be the third running back on this team. Because I think Hayden would have supplanted him. So he'd be, you know, number three behind Hayden and Henderson. And he's like, I want to go someplace and play. I don't blame him. But yeah, I think the writing's on the wall that Henderson's coming back. Yep. No official announcements yet. Not breaking news here. But I just you read the tea leaves, and I think that's what they say. All right, anything All right. else, Jared? Anything else you want to add to? Um... We have Austin's overs on Austin's over unders. Yes, uh, we do. Let me pull that up here. I totally forgot to put this in here. Just 
See, All right, even you think this game doesn't matter because you, you <laughs> if you thought this game mattered, you wouldn't have forgot about Austin's over unders. And then, 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 then stop it. All right, here we go. Austin, I hate bowl, I hate bowl games. All right, first off, uh, he has Kyle McCord. Oh, wait, uh, <laughs> Devin Brown rushing attempts. Sacks, sacks are excluded. Six and a half. So presumably scrambles are included. Yeah. They don't have to be go planned under. runs. I'm going to go under. Uh, I think over. I'm sorry. I, I know Devin Brown's more of a runner than McCord was, but he's not as good as a runner, runner as Stroud was. Ryan Day only I, I he, Ryan Day only has I, I two think, scholarship quarterback. Or no, Jebby is still on the team for the sake of this game. I, so I guess he has three. I, I just but think, I just. I just think he's just not going to be comfortable with this offensive line and he's just going to get happy. He's going to get happy feet. So I, that's well, my, he's, that's my reasoning. If he um, wants to play in Ryan day's offense, he needs to learn to run with the intent to throw and not run with the intent to run. I understand. I understand. Uh, Schrader yards from scrimmage, 126 and a half. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over it with this. And if it is over, um, it means this is going to be a really close game. But Schrader is a very, very talented running back. And he's he's, he's going to get his touches. He's going to get his yards here. So I'm, I'm going to go over 126 and a half. Uh, I'm going to go under. Emeka, Emeka catches six and a half. I'll go under for this one. I think six and a half is a really good number. Um, but I think I think Tate will get a good amount of looks. Wild, wild, wild prediction here. If over, if over, it's because Ryan Day is trying to showcase him to help him out in the draft. If under, it's because they they're trying to get the rookies involved and let them get some experience and mm. you know just i right. i think it depends i think it depends upon if they if they think a mech is coming back or not ohio state defensive sacks at two and a half under and that's that's that hurts me to say that but i'm going to go under i agree they have a really good offensive tackle we don't know who's playing for ohio state ty leak's playing I believe Hall is playing. I believe Sawyer's playing. I'm going to venture a guess. And yes, this is a guess that JT is not playing. Um, so that's where I'm at there. Although I'd say this, I really like Kenyatta Jackson. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Really tried to hold that one back there for a second. I really like Kenyatta Jackson. Um, I really like Caden Curry. You know, if they get an opportunity, they could make some plays. Is JT coming back? Maybe he hasn't said anything. I'm going to venture a guess and say no. Um, I'm, I'm like 85. He's leaving 15. He's coming back. That that's about where I'm at. Jared's right. typically Next wrong, though. That's 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 very fair, Zach. It is very fair. Tommy Tommy Pickle tackles eleven and a half. Uh, is is Tommy confirmed playing in this game? Yeah, yeah, he's playing. Uh, mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go, go. under. I'm going I'm going over. I'm going over. He's I'm going, going out under. with the bank. Burden. I I think he's definitely he's definitely going to the draft. He's gone. He's already announced that he's going to the Senior Bowl. He's definitely going to the draft. Um, I'm saying I think they cycle him out. I think they you know let Gay Powers get some reps. Let C J Hicks get some reps. I don't know how much he ends up actually playing. Uh, burden receiving yards, 56 and a half. Um, I'm going to go over. 
I think so too. I'll go over as well. And Stover touchdowns at point five. I'm gonna go over. Just need I'll one. Go. I'll take that. Yeah. You, you you have a. You're probably not gonna have Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, um, you, tight ends are your your safety blanket there. So yeah, I'll go over as well. Yeah, I mean you have a young quarterback. Your primary red zone threat in Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably not going to play. So who's your secondary red zone wide receiver, pass catcher, I should say? Stover. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over on that one. I see no shot he sits in his final game at Ohio State. Why? He's draft bound. I'm not saying I, I, he plays. Sure. He already said he's going to play, but again, the game doesn't matter. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really not trying to be an obnoxious. Okay. I was earlier right now. I'm at this, at this particular point in time, I'm really not trying to be an obnoxious dick, but like this game doesn't matter. I'm sorry. I think that's why people got, I mean, they're used to it now, but like when players first started opting out of bowl games, this is why people got so pissed because it made very obvious. It made very obvious a truth that people don't and didn't want to admit to themselves, which is that these games don't matter. These are exhibitions. These are spring game plus. Sorry. Jared's just a hater. We're, 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 we're all in agreement to that. First, it's agreement. Second, I'm sorry that I, the, the, this truth is inconvenient for you. You 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 call me a hater. You call me names because you, you you can't logically defend or refute refute what I'm saying because you know I'm right. You know I'm right. Matters more. It matters more than a game against Akron. No, it doesn't. Because you have to win that game against Akron. You also have to use that game against Akron to prepare and develop for the season you're playing in. And you can use this game to be prepared for next season. Yeah, sort of. But not really. You don't have your full complement of players in. A bunch of these players are going to be leaving. Thanks. You're going to have coaching turnover. This is a spring game. It's for the young. You use the spring the game guys. to prepare for the upcoming season, too. But, but it's still just full, a spring they're game. Full, they're not going full board on, on this. Which is game. they are. They which, are this one. Which is why I say it's spring game plus. Not even close to spring game. Can't you can't compare them? I just did. Just well, it's wrong. <laughs> it is. It is utterly wrong, Jared. Okay. I'm telling you that this game, win or lose, has zero impact on the upcoming season. Am I wrong? You are. You are wrong. Okay. But we're just how how is we're not, how is next year different how does next year play out different if ohio state wins 21 to 17 or loses 21 to 17 i think it's more of the meaningful play time rather than the outcome of it so the outcome doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't make that this is a meaningless bowl game jared I mean, if the outcome doesn't matter, it kind of does. No, just no. All right. I know, I know people don't like to hear it, but I'm sorry. So short sighted. It's it's not. It's not short sighted. I'm sorry. The game doesn't matter. It it has no effect on Ohio, on the program or the team. On what happens in, in 2024. This has 
no bearing, zero bearing on any game that comes after it. But you know how many games Hot Dog Harbs has won? I, I actually don't. How many has he won? He's won one. Good to know. It affects the Big Ten revenue checks. No, it doesn't. No. It does not. They get paid a salary to show up, not to win. They make more money. No, they don't. You, you, you get paid an appearance fee, not a victory fee. All right. I, I've made my point. I have made my point. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, it affects really. the bullshit high school kids here all year about the Big Ten versus the SEC. Uh, the first off, wins and losses don't matter. Individual wins and losses don't matter a ton to, to high school kids. Two, National Signing Day just wrapped. Not that it, I, I don't even think it would have mattered if it hadn't just wrapped. And if you say, well, what about the 2025 kids? They won't even, they, it has, what, they lost a meaningless bowl game a year ago? They don't, they don't care. Who, what was Missouri's outcome in the bowl, in bowl season last year? Who'd they play? Who did, one year ago, who did Missouri play and did they win? And I see Kyle going for the keyboard. Last year? Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not actually asking Kyle. I'm making a point. Okay. Like, name a non-playoff game. Don't count the playoff games. Because those matter. Name a bowl outcome from last year. Just name a bowl outcome from last year that wasn't a playoff game. You can't think of one, can you, Kyle? I can't. Honest to God, I can't. I I don't I I don't even know. Not even like the New Year's Day six bowls. I cannot tell you X team beat Y team in Z bowl last year. Other than the playoff games, I can't. I honest to God can't name one to you. Can you name one to me? No, not offhand. Yeah. That's my point. Kyle, I'm sorry. Did you have anything in Kyle's corner? No, I don't. Okay. I'm sorry this truth is 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 not fun for everybody, but it's it's true. I'm sorry. Um but we're moving on. <laughs> okay. Um that's it. That's the end of the episode. Uh tonight's ending music we brought to you by what the fuck is a Gasparilla bowl? That's the question. <laughs> I remember Wisconsin beating Bama in the first pinstripe bowl because I thought it was hilarious. How many years ago was that? <laughs> the first pinstripe bowl, that's 10 years ago? Maybe not quite 10, maybe seven or eight, something like that. But yeah, the Bama had to play in the North. I mean, that's just funny. B Bama having to play a bowl game in December in New York is just funny. Like, that's, ju that's just funny. All right, that's it. That's the end of today's show. Tonight's ending music is Two Cow Garage. Once again, Two Cow Garage. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, this is Two Cow Garage. Mm -hmm.